Unit Eight, Listening, Part Three, Exercise Two. In today's on message, I'm joined by Harry Cameron, the veteran journalist who has witnessed many changes in his profession over the last nearly sixty years. Harry, welcome. Thank you. Harry, can you tell me what being a journalist was like when you started as a junior reporter? My main memory of those far-off days is the sense of pride I felt at writing for a respected national newspaper. It was a real honour. What you have to remember is that in those days, people got most of their information about the world from their daily newspapers. Television was in its infancy, something only the rich could afford. The radio broadcast regular news bulletins, but newspapers gave people the pictures to go with the stories. Journalists like me travelled the world and filed reports, which kept people up to date with everything important. I remember in the early 1950s reporting from a war zone in East Asia. I wrote my report in my hotel bedroom. I could hear gunfire and see plumes of smoke. I phoned the report through to my editor for publication a day or two later. I was reporting something thousands of miles from home, something the public didn't already know. But people still read newspapers today, don't they?、Uh, yes, of course. But I believe the function of newspapers has changed. If you want to know what's going on in the world at any particular time, you don't read a newspaper, do you? You look on the internet or turn on the telly. Whatever channel you're watching, there'll be regular news updates. So, what can newspapers provide if not current news? Well, I suppose different newspapers provide different things, don't they? The broadsheets give us background to the news stories and an in-depth analysis of the issues involved. I think they do this very well. At the more popular end of the market, papers these days focus more and more on stories involving celebrities from the world of sport, TV, cinema, and of course, sport itself. People lap all this up, and I suppose it is news of a kind. And what about citizen journalism? Is this a term you're familiar with? Yes, it is, and it's something I have some sympathy with. Even though it may put some of my own colleagues out of work in the long run. So, how would you explain its sudden appearance as a source of information? It's quite simple. The fact is that the internet has given everyone access to a wealth of information and to a worldwide audience. So, a citizen journalist in a war zone like me all those years ago doesn't have to write a story and send it to an editor who can decide whether or not to run the story in their newspaper. They can simply add information to a news website or write their own blog. Bloggers are the new journalists. And how reliable are bloggers and citizen journalists? At least as reliable as the traditional news providers. Whose stories are usually revised and cut by editors who may be under political pressure from a newspaper owner or even their government. Some news websites allow other members of the public to add to, update, or correct stories that are already there. It's a very democratic process. So this is not something you think should be controlled. Absolutely not. And of course, you couldn't control it even if you wanted to. And you have no regrets about the effect of this form of journalism on the profession you were so proud to be part of when you first became a reporter. I suppose I'm a little sad. I mean, things will never be the same again. But the important thing is that people have reliable sources of up-to-date information. Of course, there will always be a role in newspapers and elsewhere for intelligent comment and analysis of the news. And if I were starting out again now, that's the kind of journalism I'd get into. And you'd do it extremely well, I have no doubt. Harry Cameron, thanks for being my guest today. It's been my pleasure.